it, and I want it now. That was Doug. <laughs> this video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe and help get this video to 2,000 likes. And I see. The episode opens with D.W. hosting her own version of MTV Cribs, a parody that will totally land with PBS Kids 6 to 11 demo. Even trashy reality shows aren't spared from the Muppet Babies treatment. D.W. is playing with her younger neighbor Vesita and snaps the head off one of her dolls. Deja vu. The two go upstairs to find Vesita's parents are putting in a bed for her. They tear down her crib and Vesita is having none of it. I won my crib! <laughs> That's what you sound like. DW assures Vesita everything will be okay, as she herself has gone through this same experience. Flashbacks ensue. We see a short-haired DW happily chilling in her crib just a few months before Kate's birth, which is absolutely not what we saw in the episode Arthur's Baby. We're barely two minutes in, and already DW is giving a giant middle finger to the show's continuity. DW's mom tells her she'll be upgrading to a big kid bed so the baby can use the crib. DW bitches and moans all the way to the mattress store. It's got monkeys. I hate monkeys. That actually tracks. Why don't you go back to your own house and stop bothering us? You bitch. DW gripes that she only wants her crib, but then immediately changes her mind when she eyes the most expensive bed in the store. That afternoon, DW shows off her new bed to the Tibble. What the actual fuck? I DW lies it was her idea to get the bed in the first place. Her fetus face friends claim her crib was the only thing protecting her from Arachnar the spider monster. The two undercooked ulcers try to scare DW, but even she's too smart for their bullcrap. He can't reach his tentacles through the bars of a crib, but kids in beds are easy picking. If he's half man, half spider, why does he have tentacles? Exactly. Cram it, you overinflated walking testicles. That night, DW is too excited to fall asleep. She gets out of bed and goes through all her books, even though she can't read. Or did the show forget that, too? DW realizes she's no longer confined by the restraints of her crib and sneaks into her parents' bedroom. Mrs. Reed puts her daughter back to sleep as she starts to regret taking the bars off DW's bed. DW promises to stay in her room and then sneaks out again the second her mom falls asleep. She sneaks into Arthur's room and steals his toys. Would you like some tea? Arthur somehow sleeps through DW's loud-ass tea party until she starts knocking shit on the floor, causing her brother to have a panic attack. Mr. Reed puts DW back to bed, but not before DW makes fun of Arthur for freaking out after she broke into his room. The next night, DW sneaks out of her room again and goes downstairs to watch TV. She tries to play her Mary Moo Cow tape and ends up breaking the VCR. She shuts off the TV, but not before stepping on her talking clown doll, which is very, um, uh... Oof. DW next goes to the kitchen to steal ice cream from the freezer. She struggles to open the container with her weak nerd arms when she gets spooked by the dog. DW runs back upstairs while Pal eats a whole container of chocolate ice cream and somehow evades death by diarrhea. DW thinks Arachnar is after her and tries to get back into her crib. She gets tangled in her bed sheets and screams so loud she makes Arthur think she's getting kidnapped. Good, let her be someone else's problem. Arthur rushes into D.W.'s room, mistakes her for a burglar, and tackles her to the ground. Turns out the monster was just D.W.'s troll doll, which looks like the world's hairiest choking hazard. D.W. finally goes to sleep, but only after making her heavily pregnant mother share her child-sized bed. D.W.'s story does little to calm Vesita's nerves. Vesita asks D.W. to spend the night to help her break in the new bed. Okay, you need to say these things in your head before you say them out loud. <laughs> that night, Vesita is fast asleep when D.W. sneaks out of bed to raid the freezer. This is why DW can't have nice things. Or friends. Let's review. DW refused to give up her crib and made a huge fuss about it. When she got a big girl bed, she let herself get scared by the Tybalt tripwire's stupid story. She snuck out of her room the first chance she got and used her newfound freedom to wreak havoc on the Reed home. She scared the crap out of her brother on multiple occasions and nearly destroyed her room in the process. And when her best friend went through the same ordeal, she agreed to stay the night, but only so she could pull the same bullshit at their house. F-U-D-W. And I say, hey. hey, I have a Patreon. Sign up at patreon.com slash to get your name in the thank you credits, along with early access to every F-U-D-W, and the chance to vote for future episodes. If there's a movie or show you'd like me to talk about, top tier patrons can commission a review for my channel. Check out the link in the description to become an F-U-D-W superfan. Next time on FUDW. Did I mention rainbows? Love rainbows. Mr. Ratburn, 
Can I trade partners? And I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of thing.